When it's cold outside, we find refuge indoors, where our heating systems keep us nice and warm. It's a critical part of every home, but heating is one of the biggest CO2 emitters, and in order to reach net zero, we need to change the ways we heat our homes and buildings. Did you know that 40% of global emissions come from buildings? And most of those emissions result from the way we heat our homes and businesses. Today, in the UK, nearly 85% of homes heat with natural gas, and around 13% use either oil or liquid petroleum gas as their main heating fuel, all of which contribute to carbon emissions. To reach our net zero goals, we need to transform the ways in which we heat our homes and buildings. We don't have all the answers yet, but there are a few key solutions to decarbonised heating. Improving energy efficiency to reduce heat demand. It might seem obvious, but one solution is to reduce the amount of heat we need to generate. Energy efficiency methods, like insulation, can help save energy by reducing the amount of heat that escapes from a building. Not only does this benefit the environment by reducing emissions from heating, but it also helps you save money on your energy bills. Installing efficient electric heat pumps. Heat pumps absorb heat from air outside the home or from the ground. Paired with better insulation, heat pumps are a very green option. While easy enough to install in new buildings, retrofitting old buildings to use heat pumps can be challenging. You might also need to make other modifications like fitting new radiators, underfloor heating or a hot water tank. This means that heat pumps are one of the more expensive options, but they have the potential to reduce your heating bills in the long term. Decarbonising our gas supply. Using natural gas for heating contributes almost 20% of the UK's greenhouse gas emissions. So one solution is to decarbonise our gas networks by replacing the natural gas with low and zero carbon gases. The most popular option being developed currently in the UK is hydrogen. One reason for this is because hydrogen could be used within our existing gas network. Only requiring a new boiler, hydrogen could be a cost-effective solution, changing the fuel we're using rather than our whole heating system. Another option is biogas, also known as renewable natural gas, or RNG. Biogas is produced by the decomposition of organic matter and can come from livestock waste, wastewater, landfills, food waste and other renewable sources. How do we get there? Switching fuel sources is a long-term plan. We need to ensure that we have the right skills to progress to decarbonised heating. For example, in the UK, we'll need more skilled installers to meet the increased demand for heat pumps. Every home is different, so there's no one-size-fits-all solution to how we will heat our buildings in the future. And it may be that the best solution is a combination of different approaches but we can get some quick wins by improving insulation in floors, lofts and windows. While making these improvements requires some upfront spending, the energy savings translate to longer term cost savings as well. And who doesn't like that? Decarbonising our heating is a big job and will impact all of us. And the many different types of buildings we have to heat makes it all the more challenging. But by employing a variety of approaches, and by leveraging the reliable grid infrastructure we already have, we can begin making strides towards net zero. And that should make you feel warm all over. <laughs>